The bombardment of Gaza continued today, even as Israel announced that between the hours of 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. local time, it would open what it called a humanitarian window. But it was unclear exactly what this meant, given that the Israeli military also said this pause in fighting would, quote, not apply to areas where Israeli defense soldiers are operating. And during these four hours, Israeli shelling struck a crowded market near Gaza City, killing 16 and injuring over 150. Hours before, as families were asleep in facilities in a refugee camp, a U.N. shelter was attacked by what the U.N. believes were Israeli artillery shells, killing at least 20. The U.N. Relief, Agency, Relief and Works Agency, or UNRWA, says this is the sixth time one of its schools has been struck. This afternoon, UNRWA spokesperson Chris Guinness spoke with MSNBC's Andrea Mitchell about today's attack. We notified the Israeli army of the exact position of this school and the fact that there were 3,300 people there precisely 17 times, one seven time. Um, and in spite of that, it is clear from our initial investigation that it was Israeli artillery that um, hit the school and caused all of these deaths. We have reached breaking point. This is beyond UNRWA, I'm afraid to say. We've reached breaking point. It's time for the parties to this conflict to accept their responsibilities to the civilians caught up in this conflict. Today is the 23rd day of the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Hours ago, the Israeli military announced that three of its soldiers were killed in southern Gaza, bringing the Israeli death toll to 59. The Palestinian death toll now stands at over 1,300. Over 200,000 people in Gaza have fled their homes. Joining me now from Gaza is NBC News foreign correspondent Eamon Mohedin. Eamon, explain to us, if you can, what this humanitarian window did, if anything. Well, the short answer to that, Alex, is it did absolutely nothing for the people of Gaza except get them to feel that perhaps they can go to places like the market that was actually shelled or to other areas. What we've seen in the past during these types of humanitarian windows, particularly in a place like Gaza City that is not on the border or not close to the border or the front lines of the ground operation, is that people tend to go out. They tend to try to get their hands on some basic commodities just to make it through another day. But what we saw in today's humanitarian windows that it was actually announced just five minutes before it was supposed to go into effect. It really didn't even give people a chance to kind of uh, address what their needs are to plan properly. Uh, and so that's why people, there was an influx of people going into that market in Shijaya market and elsewhere. Uh, but then ultimately it turned out to be that the Shijaya market was not an area that the Israelis thought to be a safe area. It is an area where they have ground forces not too far away from it. And that's why eyewitnesses and other sources, including health officials, say that the Israeli military began shelling it, uh, not giving any specific reasons, but ultimately leading to the death of so many of those Palestinians. Those humanitarian windows are meant to be that, a chance for people to either find loved ones that may be trapped beneath the rubble, try to recover bodies, for paramedics to try to help those that are injured and trapped. Uh, but and again, it proved to be a very deadly window here in Gaza this afternoon. Um, Eamon, Israel is saying it struck this UN shelter that we discussed at the top of this segment uh, as a response to militants opening fire on soldiers who were near a school. The U.S. has really has condemned the shelling of the school, but has not um, has said we don't know for certain who was behind it. Is there any talk of responsibility at this point? Well, we went to the school today and we spoke to U.N. officials on the ground who were there at the time of the attack from the security personnel that were there. We also spoke to eyewitnesses. None of the Palestinians that we spoke to on the ground said that there was any type of fighting taking place. There was no sound of outgoing rocket. There was no gunfire. There was no mortars being launched going outwards towards Israeli positions. The Israeli military, as you can probably hear above me, has drones above the skies of Gaza pretty much 24-7. They have a very good sense of what is happening happening on the ground where fighting is taking place. They have yet to release any evidence to support their claim that there was uh, fighting taking place in the vicinity of the school. In addition to that, I think in the past, over having covered three different conflicts now in these types of environments, international aid organizations, human rights organizations, including Israeli 
ones that have documented these types of attacks in the past will also tell you that there's been little accountability from within the Israeli military to investigate itself thoroughly. Very few officers, very few soldiers are ever punished uh, for these types of attacks that kill innocent Palestinian civilians. And so they're not holding their breath that the Israeli military is going to put forth a thorough investigation that will uh, actually determine the cause of the attack. It's kind of standard operating procedure to see the Israeli response, to say that there was fighting near the vicinity of the school, and more importantly, that it is investigating it. But very rarely do we see any type of prosecution for any wrongdoing, if there is any wrongdoing, that comes on the back end of that. Amen. You're on the ground there, and, and it's nightfall, so one can't see the background that well. But in terms of what is practically the, the circumstances under which folks are trying to survive here, 215,000 folk people have been displaced. The infrastructure has effectively been destroyed. Uh, the New York Times quotes a man at one of the U.N. shelters today saying, My house was burned and death followed us here. Where am I supposed to go? Where are people going? Is there any sense of security where you are? The short answer again to that, Alex, is unfortunately there is no sense of security here. We've been to almost every part of Gaza, at least in the northern part, from Gaza City to the eastern borders. We have seen time and time again Palestinians that have left the front lines following the instructions of the Israeli military, coming into places like Gaza City, taking refuge with relatives, friends, people that have opened their homes to complete strangers. Sometimes, as in one case that we've reported on, 60 people living in one apartment. Even in the places where they think they are safe, they are not safe. Here in Gaza City, I've documented the cases of several Palestinians who left their homes but were ultimately killed while they were taking refuge in other people's homes. Now, the overall atmosphere is one of terror. When you talk to Palestinians, that is the biggest sense that is crippling them, is that they have a fear of where to go, where to keep their kids safe, where to keep their family safe. There is no safe place to go. It is very much a sense that they are held hostage by this conflict and no way out. NBC's Eamon Moedin, thank you for the update, Eamon, and, and please stay safe.